I love old scary places. Oh, swim. I get remember the it graveyards? Just stimulates me. Uh, Imagination somehow. Remember the graveyards that we saw there too? Aye. Oh, there ain't nothing like those in the. Nothing in the world. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, like Lucinda said that time, it's there lies your remains, boy. I know, and they they don't Marge pretty it up said at that all. Too. Yeah. God, I mean, in fact, Lucinda got it from Margie. I remember, yeah, in my hometown of Lackawanna, the big thing in town was Bethlehem Steel. They used to put out in the paper every day about somebody that got injured there. Another one was this big grinding wheel place. They made wire and things like that. And there was this grinding wheel there that made this horribly horrible sound all through the night. And there was like oh. whistles and stuff for people to take their lunch breaks at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm sure that Squint, I bet you heard the same thing when you were in South Carolina, the mill whistles. Oh, I all sure night. did. Oh, God, those are strange. It kind of makes your pulse pound. And it makes bit. you it makes you feel like you're part of a company, even if you don't work there. <laughs> yeah, it sets off some kind of chemical reaction in your brain. I feel like you're setting off that in mind now. I, I'm trying to picture myself being a working, a in a working factory, working person in a factory with a large blade. <laughs> Well, we lost that one. <laughs> I was going to say throw some cold water on him, but I can't even say get your cold oh, no. rag. <laughs> because I know, there's we, the, we what, what, what I wouldn't give for that sloppy Kelly Jean rag now. Aye, that's right. And she should be here with me, me little wife. Yeah, Kelly Jean. I love Kelly Jean. She ain't here at all. I, I'm never with the person I, I'm supposed to be. No, neither am loving. I. Neither am I. Well, I'm here. And I'm here. Hey, this is the story of my life. I'm always with women I ain't married to. And Margie's here. Oh, stop. And I'm here. <laughs> well, you're married to me, Bob. We know. Perhaps. You'd better go on, Schlanger. Oh, I already finished... I'm all done now. All right, Lois. Well, you know, it, it's in my mind that it's just kind of like there isn't a reality that we could be out of. You see, right now, I'm not hungry or thirsty. I'm glad we had a skimpy breakfast so we could have a, a good meal tonight and... I'm trying to ignore the fact that it's that it's gone and that the water's gone. But then there's another side of me that says, face the morbidity. It is gone. It's over. Comedy and tragedy. Comedy and tragedy. I can see the little masks right there like they always were on the stage. I can I can I can feel the, the, the coke that's all dried up by the seats and the popcorn. And the sticky Ew. gum, and Ew. it's funny how all these little oddities of life, it's like when you when you become an actress or an actor, you have to note all the little intricacies of human life, and what you said is important, you know, like remembering the crunch of the popcorn under your feet, and the, the reluctant way the sole of your shoe pulled away from that dried Coke that... <laughs> that was there and, and the you, person with the cowboy hat in front of you when you're trying to watch even though it may be silly it's an observance of life the stench of your first uh, cow pasture that you visited Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm trying not to, to get rid of that <laughs> well <laughs> but when you when you play a part you recall all these things and pull them back to you to get into the mind of perhaps you're playing a farmer or a farmer's daughter or something and or, or a foreign person that or lived both. a foreign person that lived in an ancient time and you try to think well I guess even back in the Roman and Grecian days and even beyond people still they probably still stepped in sticky <laughs> things and they still <laughs> had the oh. you know the Different stinks and yeah, smells. with the Roman nose and <laughs> yeah, any big nose, ancient Grease and things like that. Stepping in Greece, well, <laughs> ancient. 
Yeah. Um, in Turkey. I've always liked to Mars. escape from the uglier things of life, but yet there's a part of me that that tells me to seek those out and deal, Crave them. deal with them. them, love them, know them, embrace them. That yeah. way you cure yourself of them. Now, you spoke of sexual abuse. Now, <laughs> you. There was a, a man that tried to bother me when I was a child, but I ran. It, it happened in the park, and he was exposing himself while lying down and I, I was oh. running through the park playing and I saw this despicable sight. <laughs> yeah, you never thought... Was he cute? It was so despicable <laughs> later on. The thing that you thought was so... Yeah, but it was shocking the first time. I mean, he was just waving it back and forth <laughs> and, he, and he wasn't a uh, desirable type of man either. And anyway, I was a child, and and somebody Ruby would like. And I, I ran, and got away, so nothing happened. But it opened a door in my mind of awful things that could happen to girls or little girls, and and I had so many fears. I, I mean, I was always afraid of falling down and mutilating myself in some way, losing an eye. Oh, cool. Uh, you know. Anything I saw that was sharp, like a even a fence that had, or stepping on a broken peanut butter jar. Yes, anything. I, oh, I immediately I my been. mind thought of uh, how that this could harm me, mutilate me, and yet there was another part of me that forced me to look at it. And I even used to read horrible detective magazines that spoke of the most grisly crimes and everything and. I did this to try to blunt my sensibilities. Are you blunt now? No, I, it, never, <laughs> it never blunted them. But then you got a insatiable curiosity. Insatiable curiosity. Well, I think it was a necessary step that I took. In something gooey. You know, oh yeah, the gooey again. But reading the ugly detective magazines was a step to try to Face. force my sensitivity to not recoil. But after, From the ha friendly after, guy in the park. after I had done that, then I I couldn't bear any more. I I had no taste. It's like when you eat too much chocolate cake, or that's a bad example because <laughs> I love loves. chocolate cake. But you know, squash. When you have just well, let's say you have vomited until you can't <laughs> do it anymore, and only a dry heave comes up. Well, that's the way I felt, and I didn't want to ever read another detective butchery type story, and I haven't. And I avoid at all costs anything grisly and gross, but they are getting more that way in films. I would never do a totally nude scene. I think just a little suggestiveness is much better. And even though I'm rather, well, I guess I'm glad what some may say is a rather loose life. I always did it in the spirit of love. I was never cruel. I was never unkind purposely, although I did laugh at my at one of my partners who was impotent. I, I didn't mean to laugh at Ooh, him. Oh, that's rough. But I, I did because he was such a comical person. It wasn't the impotency I was making fun and ridiculing. It was, it was the way he himself was and how he dealt with it, he tried to blame it on me, and, and it was so childish. <laughs> anyway, there's, there's tons of things that go into your life, and that probably should never have been there, but at least I have escaped a lot of things that could have happened to me until... No. Oh. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> I must think now. Oh, we're like one big mind. We can all think together. One big universal mind. Yeah. Was anybody sexually abused here? Only by my husband, but that's all right. Yeah. No one did that to me. <laughs> well, you probably talked him away. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and anyway, you were always big, weren't you? 